When we think of the UK, we think of wet, windy, dull, overcast weather. And we often find ourselves wanting to go abroad to the Mediterranean or further afield to the tropics or, you know, somewhere where it seems a bit sunnier on paper. But what if I was to tell you that the UK is arguably one of the greatest nations in Europe in particular to grow plants? Now, this might come as a bit of a surprise for many, or maybe not a big surprise for others. But as I say, when you think about the requirements for plants, obviously it's water, it's sunlight, it's warmth, and the UK has an ample supply of all of the above. We've seen during the 2023 summer, uh, well, there's been quite a few heat waves across the Mediterranean, for example. You've got 45 degrees plus temperatures across the Mediterranean basin, and that is not adequate for plant life, really speaking. So I'm here to talk about why the UK is arguably one of the greatest countries in Europe to grow plants and horticulture is such a big deal in the British Isles. So if we take a good look at the UK, we see that the mainland areas lie between latitudes 49 degrees north and 59 degrees north. So it's quite a northern latitude. So you'd think, well, reasonably speaking, the winters would be really brutal. And obviously, if we look at, say, the United Kingdom plant hardiness zone map, this is constructed by uh, the American hardiness zone map, which doesn't always translate perfectly, but it's the most useful, I think, interactive map we can use right now. Then we see that much of the UK is extremely mild. I mean, the most common sort of plant hardiness zone you can see in these images is zone 8B to uh, 9A which is not very cold at all. These are, uh, you know, plant hardiness zones you'd see in the likes of, uh, you know, northern Spain, um, you know, in subtropical zones. So obviously there's a warmer climate than um, would originally meet the eye and maybe your experiences would possibly say otherwise, but this is what the official map is for the United Kingdom. And what we'll see throughout the uh, southwest, mainly the westerly part of the United Kingdom and the British Isles, is zones 9B and even a zone 10A and I believe a 10B, which means these areas see very little frost. But, uh, quite often in years, they don't see frost at all. And on top of this, if we look at the precipitation map of the United Kingdom, we see a story of mild, wet weather consistently. Now, there is a difference between um, the southeast and the west. You see in the southwest, uh, this, well, yeah, specifically the southwest and the west, you get a lot more uh, westerlies, uh, bringing in um, more precipitation and you get in the south, southeast, it's actually got a very similar uh, precipitation chart to Madrid. Um, but the difference is that, that in Madrid, you typically get most of the precipitation in winter and in the UK, the rainfall is more evenly distributed. So why does this matter to you? Well, growing ornamental plants is what most gardeners and plant lovers share a preference to, which is exactly where the British Isles owes its horticultural success to, the ornamental plant species. You can grow almost any plant from Europe in the UK. And that's not necessarily true the other way around. Even plants that are native to the Mediterranean. Take for example, the olive tree, which is Olea europea. The Mediterranean climate is often said to follow the northern limit of this olive tree. But yet olive trees can grow unprotected in the majority of the UK. This is because of the extremely mild climate for a country of this high latitude. Or okay, take for example, one of the only native palm trees to Europe, which is Shamarops humulus. This palm can be grown in almost any region in southern England with little to no protection. And even in northern England, you can grow it with, say, minimal protection. The diverse ornamental plant range is not limited to Europe, but also South Africa, New Zealand, Argentina, and subtropical North America. The range of plants that can be planted in the UK is almost limitless with the exception of the actual tropical zone. I think it's also important to note that Britain has one of the most unique climates in Europe in reference to the temperate rainforest. And here's a map of exactly where the temperate rainforest range would have been prior to deforestation and overgrazing and stuff like that. So these areas have enough rainfall to be classed as a temperate rainforest, which means they have nearly 70% of uh, tree cover, they're rich in uh, lichens and mosses, and a very mild, wet, humid climate throughout the year. This is extremely rare in Europe and is only rarely found in like Northern Iberia, uh, Southern Norway, and the West of the United Kingdom. But back to regards to temperature in the United Kingdom, we see very little variation throughout the year. So this country in the British Isles is very stable. So the mean temperature difference between the height of winter 
and the height of summer is smaller in comparison to, say, a continental climate like uh, southern Germany or, you know, a Mediterranean climate like uh, Barcelona. This smaller difference is very important because it's stable. So in the UK, there is less likely to be extremes of either high temperatures or extremely low temperatures. And this is exactly what plants like. Right, granted in recent years, things have been different. There's been heat waves, there's been cold spells, but this is an exception to the rule. The overall climate of the United Kingdom is extremely temperate and that's where it plays its trump card. Stable climates are the perfect growth factor for plants. And as people experiment more with, say, the Mediterranean-based plant species, we have Mediterranean palms popping up all over the place, especially London, considering it has the urban heat island effect, so it gets even less extreme temperatures in winter. We have forums dedicated to spotting the biggest palm trees in London. You can scroll through these images and be absolutely amazed that all these palms are actually found in the United Kingdom. And it just begs the question, why haven't we done this sooner? There's a huge market here for exotic themed plants, and we're going to see in the next few years huge, well, date palms, side cards, tracky carpets, end up all over the UK and get bigger and bigger as people dabble in the realms of exotic planting schemes. There's even revised parts of the UK that are being classified as subtropical, putting out in parts with Vietnam and I guess Northern Mexico. Places like The Telegraph have actually reported on this. Since on average temperatures stay above 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit for more than seven months of the year, meaning it can actually be classified as subtropical. Obviously the heat index isn't as high there, but overall the mean temperature is above 10 degrees. So technically it's fallen without that limit. And this is even just scratching the surface of Cornwall and the Southwest in its entirety. The places like the archipelago islands of Isles of Scilly, they have subtropical gardens and plants that you can only grow in these parts of the country. But that can be another video in itself because it's such a diverse place and there's so many different types of plants you can grow there that it would definitely warrant a new video on its own. But this video was just to show the actual diversity and the horticultural <laughs> specimens you can grow in the United Kingdom, which is a surprise to say people who don't live here. And it just goes to show that climate conditions across the planet are much more complicated than originally meets the eye.